He gave satisfying answers to all questions philosophers had been asking for years like who am I, where did I come from, where am I going with a Quran-based perspective. Humanity was shedding tears of blood. Newborn baby girls were taken away to be buried alive under the pretense of visiting their uncle. There were lots of blood, hatred and anger and lack of confidence. But this wouldn't go on. The year 571 would exactly come one day. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca without a father in 571. His dad was Abdullah and mom was Amina. Every kind of evil was around the city of Mecca in the years that he was born. In his childhood and youth, he abstracted himself from that bad atmosphere and he was behaving differently according to that period. There was a strangeness in his behaviors even before the prophecy came to him. People of Mecca, who never trust anyone, trusted him so much that they would entrust him their properties, their homes and even their wives and daughters. Because of that, they would call him as Muhammad al-Amin He would keep the justice, was on the side of the righteous people and questioned the belief of worshipping idols. Moreover, Contrary to other people, he would reject the worship them, and the most anticipated time came. The year was 610. The first revelation came in the Hira mountain, and the order Ikra, read, which most of us unfortunately don't obey, and for that reason regressed instead of progressed. He had no literacy, but he received something which would shut all the literate ones up. This message made happy the ones around him, but it also made some notable ones angry. He started a movement which would make him the best revolutionist ever. For the sake of his mother, he was patient when some intestine was spilled from his noble head and when he was thrown stones at. In spite of this, he said, Oh Rabbi, if they had known the truth, they wouldn't have done this. He was shouting La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah with his companions in the streets of Mecca. In a case that even the trick of the most talented illusionist trick was easily refuted, he on the contrary, quenched the giant army with water coming from his fingers, split the moon into two pieces, foreseen and foretold about our century and today's signs, and even one person could not say he is a liar. Even when they tried to call him a liar, they were disgraced like Musaylamatul Kazab, who tried to imitate Surah Al Qariya by saying, The elephant, what is that elephant? And how can you know what the elephant is? It's the elephant whose trunk is right along. Was that, I don't know, was that meaning? In a condition that a sultan who had a giant military power couldn't achieve to make his people quit a little habit like smoking in Ottoman period. He, peace be upon him, succeeded to make his stubborn people relinquish their disgusting habits in such a short period like 20 years. He built such a model society from an immoral society that they became paradigm for many. He gave satisfying answers to all questions philosophers had been asking for years like who am I, where did I come from, where am I going with a Quran-based perspective. He finished the racism problem 14 centuries ago by saying neither is there any superiority of black person to white one, nor white one to black one. You know, today's Europe make it seem to be solved, but it is still one of the biggest issues of modern western world. By saying this, he proved that Quran is universal. In such a period that many psychologists can find a solution for suicide, psychological disorders, social depression even though today's medicine's great progress. 14 centuries ago, he gave us good tidings that there is a place called hereafter where we will live forever with our moms, dads and loved ones. If his prophethood slide leaves the universe, the universe will die shortly thereafter. Oh Rasulullah, what would we do without you? Peace be upon your light which keeps the universe alive.